Sveiki, mėlėjai, Žalgiris Insider platformos prenumeratoriai. Jeigu stebėte šį įrašą, vadinasi, jūs esate nei linio įrašo žiūrovai. Pirmą kartą mūsų Žalgiris Insider platformoje svečiuojasi ne kas kitas, o vyriausiasis Kauno Žalgirio komandos treneris Martina Šileris, su kurio kalbėsime rubrikoje Žalgiris on Air Plus. Hello, coach, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much. The whole basketball thing, how did it all start with you? Because uh, you were born in a country where basketball is not uh, a huge sport. In Germany, yes, basketball is big, but not the biggest sport. So how did it come to you, the basketball spark? When I was 11, I guess, um, I just uh, ran into it. Uh, I was playing soccer and tennis like everybody in Germany at that time was. Uh, soccer still everybody plays, obviously. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just ran into it like on pure chance. So I had like a Boston Celtics cap for whatever reason and just looked what looked up what it is, you know. And then there was this NBA action on Eurosport like once a week at 11 o'clock at night and I watched it and I really liked it and then got a hoop and and started playing and joined a club I really fell in love with it don't know don't really uh, know why that Eurosport thing it was only for 30 minutes yeah yes so, so you got involved with that only after watching 30 minute show yeah I think so like that kind of that kind of was the story you know I really thought it was I just loved it you know I, I loved soccer and, and tennis so I was Uh, big time into sports, you know, yeah. big time into, uh, um, I, I, I would say probably um, in the aftermath, you know, for my own playing career, it would have been smarter to stay with tennis or soccer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but so I was big time into sports. Uh, and for whatever reason, uh, that's the basketball thing I really, I really loved, like really loved. It's uh Very uh, subjective thing, you know, <laughs> difficult to explain. Uh, does that mean that you wanted to become a pro when you were just a kid, just to be a professional uh, sportsman, footballer or tennis player? Yes, yes. And then when basketball started, like my big dream was being a, a professional basketball player. And uh, I was um, like r pretty good when I was young and the older I got, the worse I got compared to the others. And... Um, so, you know, I played on the highest youth level you can in Germany and uh, and was, the, was in the all state teams, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, when I was like 17, I understood that I would not make it. You know, when I was 14, I thought I'd make the NBA. When I was 15, I thought I'd made the German Bundesliga. Yeah. And when I was 17, I figured out probably nothing's going to happen in that direction. Um, uh, and then my next big thing was uh, coaching. It came came across pretty quickly. So uh, coaching is an extension of my dream that I had when I was 12. You know, I wanted to be in professional basketball. Uh, how closely were you working with the Utah, Utah Jazz uh, coaching staff with Quinn Snyder uh, himself? Uh, very close. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm in contact with him now, like, basically every, does he watch your game every right? second week he, he actually told me that they've that they uh that they've got one play called so and so jalge so, <laughs> so yeah, play yeah, yeah. so so um so he, he he's got an assistant who always is in charge of all the european stuff so he he's got an assistant who <clears throat> who basically one of his biggest like you know descriptions is like study the european game But we're in constant contact. Um, so the connection was extremely tight. Without him backing everything up, it would have not worked. Like that's where it starts, you know. It's like a youth coordinator or a youth coach of a second team. Like our second team coach, uh, he can function with Jalgeris better if I've got his back. It's, it's what it is. If I don't like him or I don't like his work, it's going to be difficult, you know, and that's how it is in Europe and that's how it is there. So he always had our back. What was the the biggest red flag before you decided to join with Jalgris? Was it, uh, I don't know, the the market of coaches in Europe where uh, the the lack of victories might get fire you or was it other things? No red flag at all. Like when Paulius called, it was a process of two days. Right, I had two days to prepare the interview, and then on the third day or fourth day, like uh, he offered me the job, and there was no, there's no red flag. Like when, like I'm serious. Like it's if if a, a Euroleague team calls uh, and uh, and 
then it's also a traditional club like Jagiris with all the with all the uh you know <laughs> tradition and all the knowledge that one has about the fans etc cetera, etc cetera. like there is no red flag like there was like zero, zero red flag that like, because because there just not is you know <laughs> like you you get a chance to i see it like this you get a chance to uh, coach and you get a chance to uh, uh i got a chance to uh, experience and get better at what i do uh on this level if i wouldn't take it like like i would be a complete coward you, you know like com- like complete coward like i can't respect like you know what i mean like yeah. be a complete uh, coward to me so Algrid has uh, asked a bunch of questions, so I'm gonna skip a few of them, but I'm gonna ask one that is interesting. Uh, your meta- method of coaching, uh, empowering players to make decisions, proved to be working in Euroleague. Are you planning of, on double down on this path or also adapt a more hands-on, do-what-I-say approach for certain games? That's a really interesting question. You're right. And... Uh, um there is how should i say there's a million ways of coaching right and and uh, at the end of the day in our profession the only way that counts is the successful way and um so whatever it is in the situation to help uh, having success you know um should be the should be the way that that you should do it probably um it's a it's a really interesting question because it's also different markets that almost ask for different things like when i went to america and even at the end i was for sure the most aggressive and loudest coach in the g league for sure like there's not even a question and probably here i'm on the other scale in Euroleague, like, you know, on the other end of the scale in comparison, I would assume. Um, and it took me like two years to adjust there. And I was, uh, I was coached there to not be yelling and not be loud. And um, because that's the way coaching is viewed in America yeah. and it's very interesting and I could never adapt all the way but I could adapt enough to get results and could adapt enough to be respected within the American eye you know yeah. um so but in the in beginning you're allowed to yell here yeah allowed to speak. and in the beginning no I would almost say you're asked to hey Kato Darin esi Žalgiris Insider prenumeratorius Įsijungi Žalgirį. Nieko nelauk, jau dabar tap Žalgirį Sinsider prenumeratoriumi. Įsijungi į Žalgirį.